Someone is closing their window across from me and they can see me talking to a camera. Okay, a pleasant surprise, but it could have been better. And when the plot twist happened, I couldn't understand what was going on at first. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be talking about my recent reads. Since school started, I haven't been able to read as much. So when I wanted to do like a monthly wrap up, I found out that I had only read about like two to three books and I felt like that wasn't enough to talk about in a video. Maybe that's complete nonsense. Please let me know in the comments down below if you'd rather see like super short monthly wrap ups instead of this like huge recent reads pile. I'm gonna have to talk about nine books in today's video and you know how much I ramble so it's probably gonna take a little while. <laughs> I will be talking about these books in like chronological order of like when I read them. So in September, I first finished Not a Happy Family by Shari Lapina. And this book is actually brought to you by today's sponsor as well, which is book of the month. So before I will give you my opinion on this book, sponsorship Sabine, <laughs> we'll be talking more about book of the month with you guys. Hi. I have arrived. It is sponsorship Sabine. <laughs> so book of the month is a super fast growing online bookish surface for readers like you and I. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers discover new books that they will love. Every single month, their team vets hundreds of books and they make their own selection and they have like a top five where you can choose from. But if you don't like any of the picks that they chose for that current month, you can also choose some of their add-ons. So for instance, for the month of December, they sent me the Anthropocene. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this title. I'm gonna try again. <laughs> the Anthropocene reviewed by John Green. This is a witty collection of essays in which John Green reviews the faults and the merits in ourselves. So this is, for instance, one of the add-ons that you can choose for the month of December. But if you don't even want to choose some of the add-ons, that is totally fine. Book of the month is risk-free. You can skip any month, anytime, and you will not be charged. Do know that they only ship to US addresses I'm from the Netherlands, but I get sent these books because our collaboration is so successful and you guys keep on supporting me by clicking the link in my bio. For the month of December, they are running a very, very special offer that I don't think you want to miss out on. If you use the code JOLLY, you can get your first book of the month book for just $5. That is a new release hardcover fiction for five dollars. I mean, how can you pass on on that? A link is in my description box, so definitely go check that out. Right now, I will be showing you guys the five picks that I chose for December. First up, I have The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This is their romance pick. This book is about twins who decide to revive their childhood habit and swap places within this romance novel. And it's like very Christmassy themed. So this would be perfect for the season right now. Next up, we have Olga Dies Dreaming by Xochitl Gonzalez, if I'm pronouncing this author's name correctly. Two siblings vie for the American dream until Hurricane Maria drags their estranged mother back into their lives. Then they also have a memoir. This is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. This is actually a little different from what they usually do. They usually promote new releases, but this time they are looking back at some of the amazing books that came out this year and they chose to put this one in their December box. This is a very moving coming of age memoir about the complications of family and how that provides ample testament to the resilience of love. And then the last two books that I want to show you guys, I am so excited about both of these. I don't know which one to put on number one, but first off, let's talk about A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham and this is their thriller pick. I'm so curious to read this because our main character has experienced some kind of trauma and now she's also a psychologist. I'm studying psychology so I find this very intriguing. When a serial killer emerges with an eerily familiar pattern, Chloe Davis wonders if she's really escaped her past. And then the last one is A History of Wild Places by Shea Earnshaw. I have actually read one of her books which is called The Wicked Deep. I really quite love that one. It was like a horror book, but this is magical realism. A mesmerizing tale about the search for a missing woman last seen going into an isolated forest town with some secrets. I mean, that sounds so mysterious and I just want to find out what is happening. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for working with me yet again and for you guys for showing all this support. Like I said, go check out their special deal. Use code JOLLY to get your first Book of the Month book for just $5. And now let's show you guys the books that I read in the past couple of months. 
Okay, so now my opinion on not a happy family. So in this book, you have like a family, mother, father, and three siblings, and their parents are super, super rich. They are gonna be celebrating Easter at their parents' house, and they have like a bit of a fight going on, and then the next day, their father and mother have been murdered. And the siblings are kind of suspecting each other because there's just so much money at stake, and everyone wants to have their fair share of like the, how'd you call that? And throughout this book, you switch perspectives and you slowly but surely get to know a lot more details about what has actually happened. Every single chapter kind of like ends at a cliffhanger and you get to know more information. With this one, I was constantly on the edge of my seat wanting to find out more about the murder scene and perhaps some of the motives that certain siblings could have to be the murderer of their parents. And this book gave me major knives out vibes. If you know me and you've been following me for a little while you know that that is one of my favorite movies i loved this it kept me on the edge of my seat it kept me distracted from like intense school work so i gave this one a four out of five stars and honestly if it wasn't for book of the month and this book being sent to me i wouldn't have read it and that was such a shame because i love this one someone is closing their window across from me and they can see me talking to a camera okay <laughs> Then I really wanted to read a graphic novel again because it's been such a long time and they are so easy to fly through. It was like about to become like October. So I really wanted to get some autumnal vibes. And then I saw Pumpkin Heads or Head. I don't know which title it is. Written by Rainbow Rowell and illustrated by, ooh, I don't know. Illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. And this was so cute. It's about a girl and a guy who work every single year, I guess, at this like autumnal farm. There was like some kind of name for it. I don't know what it's called, like an autumnal festival. And they are kind of flirty, but they're kind of just like walking in circles. And it's like a fall romance graphic novel. And just like the setting, the drawings are absolutely perfect. I read this during one train ride and it was perfect. So I think I gave this one like a three and a half to a four to five stars because it's not super memorable, but it was exactly what I was looking for at the time. And I really enjoyed it. Then I picked up a book that, oh my gosh, I was so excited when this one came out because this author is one of my favorites and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is a daunting book because it is huge. It is over 500 pages. And before I went into this one, I had heard quite like mixed opinions on whether people actually liked it. They thought it was very boring. They thought it was very slow. And my reading pace is not usually slow books. I like to be kept on the edge of my seat to kind of like have something that will power me through the novel. So like either super interesting characters or like a rather fast paced plot. I listened to this one on audiobook alongside with reading my physical copy and that was perfect because the narrator of the audiobook does such an amazing job. But yeah, it is definitely a slow book. I can say that. And usually this would not be my type of story, but the first 150 pages, I really needed to get into it. You follow our main character, Addie LaRue, and I think she was born somewhere around like 1740. And then she made a deal with the devil to live eternally, but the catch is that she will not be remembered by anyone that she meets. People forget her instantaneously until she meets someone in like a bookshop who remembers her. And that's strange, right? <laughs> that's kind of contradicting the deal that she made. When that happened, when she met Henry, the person who remembers her, that is when I really started to get invested in the story, enjoying the writing style and kind of just the slow pace of the book, but lots of character development. I did feel like there was a lack of explanation or like every single year she meets up with the devil again, with whom she made the deal. And I kind of felt like, okay, what is the purpose? purpose of these meetings? Is it like another bit of like a fantasy element for me? It wasn't super clear. I don't know. Something about that was lacking in my opinion, but I really did love the life lessons. I really liked the intensity of the relationship between Addie and Henry. Just these two characters coming together and enjoying each other's presence. It just felt like something very special. So overall, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't what I was expecting. So it was a pleasant surprise, but it could have been 
better. I know that this all sounds so, so vague. I think I gave it like a three and a half out of five stars just because it would not be my typical read, but I still loved it in some way, but nothing much happens. There isn't a lot of plot. So if you are someone who also needs that in a story, I would not pick this one up, but the audiobook definitely helped me power through this one. <laughs> It's been a while since I've read a nonfiction book, so I really wanted to have a look at what type of like subjects interested me. And I had heard so many amazing things about everything I know about love by Dolly Alderton. And she actually does talk about all these topics that are crossed out. So parties, dates, friends, jobs, and life. It's basically how I would describe it, her diary and her life lessons. It truly feels as if she is talking through you throughout this book and as if you are her friend. I use like a marker to just like highlight sections that I thought were really wonderful to read about. And maybe those would kind of like be my take home messages or things that would like calm me down in times of doubt. She talks a lot about heartbreak, about the importance of friendships. It's very difficult for me to formulate my main thing that I like learned from this book. It's not as if I am like completely switching my point of view in life, but I just, I don't know. It felt very comforting to pick up this book, especially when you're just like trying to figure out life. I would definitely recommend this one. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. It's really weird to like rate a person's life. So take it with a grain of salt. I just learned lots of new things from it and it felt like someone was hugging me throughout this book, okay? Telling me that life is gonna be good <laughs> or at least okay. Then book of the month came through with another amazing book and that was The X-Hex by, what is her name again? It's actually Rachel Hawkins, but she uses like a pen name for this book and that is Erin Sterling. This is an adult witchy romance. They call it a fantasy romance, but the fantasy element was super, super light and not very well explained. So you do not get to like know the whole magic system. It's kind of just like, oh yeah, I'm making a potion with this and this, and that takes care of this problem. Or like something bad was happening and then they already like knew a spell that they could use against it. So I wouldn't take that too seriously because if you do, then this book has like a huge flop. It's very much focused on the romance, which was a ton of fun. Our two main characters where the story starts off, they were kind of like having a little fling, having a relationship, but then the guy whose name I have forgotten was actually engaged to someone else, but he didn't want to marry that person anymore. So they broke up and they haven't talked to each other in 10 years. And Vivian was, I think our main character, cursed our guy, our love interest. So when he comes back 10 years later, all these weird things start happening to him in the town and they kind of like have to work together to resolve the curse, make everything undone. And this whole like romance unfolds at the same time. I read this right before Halloween. So like the whole witchy magical vibes were absolutely there. I just enjoyed it. It's not like a super memorable book to me, but I think it was just a lot of fun. So I rated it a three and a half out of five stars. Then I was still in like that dark academia autumnal vibe, but I wanted to have something easy. So I picked up a middle grade. This is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. I think I picked this one up because of Mel from Mel Reads. If I'm correct, she really, really enjoyed this one. It says here, beware the order of Black Hollow Lane. With a dad who disappeared years ago and a mother who's a bit too busy to parent, Emmy is shipped off to Wellsworth, a prestigious boarding school in England where she's sure she won't fit in. Before she leaves, Emmy finds a box of mysterious serious medallions in the attic of her home. Medallions that belonged to her father, her father who may have gone to Wellsworth. When she arrives at school, she finds the strange symbols from the medallions etched into walls and books, which leads Emmy and her new friends, Jack and Lola, to Wellsworth's secret society, the Order of Black Hollow Lane. Emmy can't help but think that the order has something to do with her dad's disappearance and that there may be more than just dark secrets in the walls of well worth. I really enjoyed the mystery element, but I feel like the whole secret society thing could have been worked out better. <laughs> I was just, I don't know, I was missing something. I cannot really pinpoint to what I missed, but I did immediately buy the secret 
of Whitestone Gate, which is the sequel to this book. So I'm definitely continuing on with this middle grade series. I think in total there will be around like three to four books. So hopefully there will be many more mysteries that need to be solved by these characters. Again, <laughs> the audiobook for this one is so great because the narrator does all of these accents and it's so great to hear. I loved it so much. It was very, very entertaining. After that, I just did not know what I wanted to pick up because I'm a huge mood reader. But then I saw one of my Instagram friends, Olivia from Live For Reading, recommending Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I actually also received this one in a book of the month box. And oh, oh, I love this. I think this is one of my favorite books maybe of 2021. It is a psychological thriller in which a couple who have been married for 10 years, I think, they are trying to save their marriage. It's not going well. And as like their last resort, as their last option to save their marriage, they go on like this secluded vacation in Scotland. It is extremely snowy. There's a huge storm and they are kind of stuck there. The house is so creepy because it is so isolated and all these weird things are happening. The chapters are super short. Every single chapter ends on like a cliffhanger. Just the whole vibe is so creepy and you just don't know whether one of them will make it out alive. Honestly, it was so good. And when the plot twist happened, I couldn't understand what was going on at first. It was so, so funny. I made like a reading vlog while I was reading this and my mind was just absolutely blown. But I'm starting to realize that I actually really enjoy thrillers and psychological thrillers too. And I gave this one, I think on Goodreads, a five out of five stars. But if I had to be a bit more critical, maybe a four and a half. <laughs> I recently made a video regarding books that are on my soon to be unhauled pile. And in that video, if you haven't watched it yet, please go do so. But in that video, I told you that if I don't read these books within the next year, I will have to unhaul them. I am forcing myself to just because I don't have any space anymore for books. One of these books that was on that list was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. And so many of you came for me in the comments and told me that I absolutely needed to pick this one up and give it a go. This book came out, I think in 2016, it's part of a trilogy and we follow two sisters, Scarlett and Tell and they have been, especially Scarlet, obsessed with like this circus that comes every single year to their island. It is a very secretive and exclusive game that you only get to partake in if you receive like an invitation. So Scarlet has been writing the master, the organizer of this festival for so many years. His name is Legend. And then one day Legend invites Scarlet to the carnival, to the festival. However, her sister gets kidnapped and is part of the game as well. So Scarlet is trying to get back to Tella and tries to find her. My conclusion for Caraval and this whole series is that I probably won't be continuing on with it. And although I was very, very pleasantly surprised, especially at the beginning, I thought the writing style was so easy to read and I kind of felt like sucked into the mystery of Caraval. Like the descriptions are so beautiful and I was so intrigued to see what this like game was gonna be and what it was gonna be about. It was a big disappointment for me. <laughs> Whilst we were in the game, I was so confused about what was happening and I felt like the game didn't have a purpose. <laughs> and when it was finished, I was like, oh, oh, that was was the game. Plus, besides that, I felt like some of the conversations between the characters felt, I don't know, it didn't feel like a very natural conversation. So I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. I gave it a three out of five stars, but I feel like I won't be continuing on with the series. I also don't own it. So that makes it a bit more easy for me to say like, oh, okay, I don't have it. I don't really care. I read this book. I am glad that I did it, but that's about it. <laughs> And then the last book that I finished before I will be quickly showing you guys the books that I'm currently reading, I read The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wong. And this one was on script. I had heard amazing things about it and it's so cute. I find it really difficult to say what it is about. Well, basically it's about this prince who really wants to have a dressmaker because he really likes to dress up. So it's like a drag queen illustrated book. And it's kind of like him coming out to his parents and to his kingdom by telling them what he actually really likes to do. And he wants to just like be himself and to fully express all of the things that he enjoys. It was a super quick read to read in just one evening and it felt very comforting. So I gave this one a four out of five stars. <laughs>
And now let's go on to the two books that I'm currently reading. One is also a nonfiction, so I will just quickly talk about that one. And that is Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. This is a nonfiction book about sex. What the blurb says is that this surprising new science will transform your sex life. So we shall see about that. Until so far, I am enjoying it. I have had a couple of courses at university regarding this topic. So I do know a couple of these things, but I'm sure I will discover lots of new information but I'm also reading another fiction book and that is Wonderland by Juno Dawson if you watch my previous video which is the end of the year book tag you know that I was about to start this book and now I'm almost finished with it the summary is very vague our main character Alice Dutchen lives like quite a privileged life and all the people around her are super privileged as well she goes to like this private boarding school and one of her good friends at school goes missing and all of a sudden she finds this invitation to this elite party called Wonderland and she thinks that she might find Bunny the friend who is missing there. It's a book that talks a lot about mental health, about gender, about privilege, and it is a weird book. <laughs> That's definitely something I can say. My enjoyment for this one is so all over the place. In the beginning, I was super intrigued, so it only went up. Then I was so confused at what was happening when this whole concept of Wonderland was being introduced. There is lots of drug use. There is lots of talk about suicide, about mental health. So there are a ton of trigger warnings regarding this book. Mixed feelings about this one until so far. But those are the maybe 11 books right now that I had to talk about for today's video. Definitely don't forget to check out Book of the Month and their special deal that they are having right now. A link is in my description box down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. I'd love to discuss that in the comment section below. So definitely let me know. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.